Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 38 of Daryl20's Let's Play series. It is really hard to, like, get your bearings in these rooms. That's the only thing I don't like about them. But, between episodes, I mirrored that room over there from here. You can see I've got a copy-paste gadget on my hotbar that has a bunch of glass assigned to it, so you can probably assume uh, how that was done. So, uh, building gadget, copy-paste gadget, made life pretty easy. Uh, but I made this one one deeper into the ground. So you'll notice that over here, um, you know, there's obviously no door in and out of it. Um, not really. Uh, though I should consider making one and see if, you know, I, I, a little door wouldn't necessarily be the worst plan in the world. Especially if I did like a nice little 3x3-ish three three kind of area here that might have a little bit more uh, tinted glass on the floor. Maybe that would be okay. We'll see if it's a problem or not. I just, I have no idea if it's going to be a problem or not. I guess we'll find out. Uh, so you and you, and that should be cool. So we'll see if having the door open here is a big deal or not. I, you know, having a way in and out that's not just my travel staff wouldn't be a terrible plan. Now this room, we're going to spawn the wither and teleport the wither, uh, hopefully with the courtesy of some arcane bricks. So my plan is this, I'm going to make arcane bricks. Now, is that what it has to be made out of arcane bricks? Let's bring up our worn notebook and refresh our memories on what we're doing. We're making a warp scroll that will store the location of a position in the dimension, and then we're going to use a warp portal to teleport any entities or items or anything that touches it to the spot in the dimension that I've thus chosen. Uh, and hopefully it all works out. We're going to find out. Um, One-way teleport to any location. Uh, build a frame from arcane bricks or its variants. So we're going to want uh, a handful of arcane stone, which shouldn't be too terrible to get, right? Uh, and then we can turn that into arcane bricks, and that should be more than enough uh, for our purposes, right? Then we're going to take a nap, because it's always nighttime when I'm recording. I, like, go through all this stuff, and I forget, you know, nighttime bad for video. Uh, so now we want to build arcane bricks in here. And if my understanding is correct, we just do something like this. And then hopefully the wither will touch the portal and be cool. I might want this to be a little bit bigger, just to be extra safe. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. Now, in theory, there should never be any explosions or problems in this room. This room should be considered safe. So we technically don't need any of the tinted glass here. We're doing it just in case, right? Uh, so now here's the warp scroll. We're going to want this guy ready to go, and we want him to spawn like right in the middle. So I don't know exactly how this is going to work, so I'm going to put myself up one, I think. Because I don't know if it like takes the floor of where you're standing or what. So if I do that, you're bound, oh, uh, use while sneaking uh, to set your location. So negative 95, 97, 86. Cool. So now I need a source jar that's full, which I can just snag from my little farm over here. 100% full, works for me. Plop that down there. And then I believe I just toss it into the world. Hey, that's cool. And boy, did that use up a lot of source. Now, my understanding is, is that it won't use up any source for anything else going forward, right? So now this thing, hello, hello, that's cool. I like that. I sure do. I sure do like that. And anything that I, you know, items that drop in there should all kind of land over here and be cool. All right. So that's, you know, number one. So let's do this. Let's do some soul sand. And let's build a wither, eh? Does that sound like a plan? Now can I? I can, good. It's gonna be tricky to get in there. Uh, what I might wanna do is have some semblance of a roof or something over this thing, but we'll see. I think if I'm, okay, yeah, if I'm flying, I'm cool, right? 
So now in theory, my hope is, I've noticed in the past, and this has always been the case, when the wither spawns, he kind of floats downwards. So I hope when he spawns, he touches the portal immediately, and he actually lands over there before he does his initial explosion spawn. But I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, yep, see, look, he spawned in one box and he immediately teleported to the other. And now he's doing his growth thing and then his explodey thing. Let's see how much of a problem is that there's a door there. Oh, not so bad. I just need to watch out for his crate. What is this thing? He has a little pet that he can spawn? That's new. Now, I think it's at this stage where he's technically capable of doing that massive explosion. That thing. Yep, and he did it. He just did it. So we just have to watch out for that. I think he does it at a specific health percentage. It looks like he does it um, when he gets like just below half and then again when he's about to die. All right, not too shabby. Um, I'm gonna need another layer of, of, of glass underneath this, this room, clearly. Um, but other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. Let me get out my buddy the mining laser. That seems pretty good enough build to me. Yes, you can. Beautiful. Now, do I need that line? I'm going to assume no. But if at some point it's determined that I do, we can always add it. So what I'm thinking is, right, we do we do something like this. You might need you might need this whole line here um, and, and the layers all around it. To be glass, just to be safe. Yeah, so let me get a little bit more dark glass or tinted glass or whatever you call this stuff. And then we'll, you know, build it up just to be a little bit, a little bit safer. I'm going to, I'm going to double layer it everywhere. Like, let's just be as safe as possible. Also, just because it's annoying to me that the blocks keep breaking and just for visual reasons, I want it to like look nice over here. You know what I mean? Um, and then what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Am I out of that stuff already? Goodness gracious. I'll tell you. Going to need more glass. I'm going to need, I'm going to need a cobble works at some point, aren't I? I feel like the answer is yes. You guys know what I mean when I say cobble works? Basically a big automation machine that makes infinite amounts of cobblestone, stone, bricks, gravel, sand, glass. Just make unlimited amounts of it and store it so that whenever I need the glass, I don't have to sit there and wait for it to craft. It's kind of already ready already, which is, which is awesome. That's cool, right? It's a very darkish look, but meh, is what it is. It's fine. It's fine. Hopefully that's enough. If I missed anything, then we'll just deal with it. I don't like that I can see through here, so I'm gonna build to me some dirt on this. Yeah, I know. That should be cool. Is good. 
Works for me. All right, so now let's get to the push button build wither stage because that's the next thing we're gonna need to do. So basically we're gonna wanna place blocks inside this room that can spawn a wither for me, right? And uh, let's confirm that this is not using any source. Correct, it is at 10% full. So it uses a big chunk of source to establish the portal, but from that point forward, the portal is always available. So that's kind of neat, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, I might use that for other things, because that's kind of cool. I like I like portals, portals are cool. They're no, they don't work cross-dimensionally, which is the only bummer, but not the end of the world. So let's get uh, let's get into modular routers. Does that sound cool? I don't think I need the uh, these gems no more. Man, look how many we have. It's so good. It's so good. Um, <clears throat> so modular routers, right? That's what's next. That's what we're gonna look at. So modular routers are cool. They can do a bunch of neat things. Um, I'm gonna get that, and I'm gonna get you know a couple of you. I think we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I remember correctly uh we're gonna need some kind of redstoniness to it though uh and i haven't quite decided how that's gonna work because i don't know that we have a great way to do redstone in the way that we're gonna need to do redstone but we'll figure it out if i'm there might be a way uh, we'll see what happens so modular routers are cool if we look at modular routers we can see there's a ton of modules that we can install in them and if we take uh, a modular router and place it in the world there's a bunch of modules that can happen and then there's upgrades we can apply to the block, and the modules module, modules themselves can also get upgrades. They basically have a one block internal buffer. They can be used for transporting items between inventories with pullers and pushers. Uh, they can also transport fluids and energy. So if you wanna go that route, you can. Um, they can be a player module. And if you hold I here, it'll tell you what happens. Remotely transfers items between the player's main or armor inventory and the modules buffer. So if you wanna transfer items in and out of your player's inventory, it can do that for you. It's pretty cool. Can also place blocks in the world, which, pfft, spoiler alert, that's what we're about to do. Um, vacuum module to vacuum items up. Void module destroys items. Uh, fluid modules for transferring fluids around. Extruder modules for placing blocks in like you know long lines, like building drawbridges and stuff. Like there's all kinds of cool modules, and there's a book, the Modular Routers Manual, that will 100% teach you all the things you need to know about modular routers. Cool. So recommend it if you want to take a look at how the whole thing works. Um, you'll see some of that throughout the series here, but there's a bunch of modules you can see what they do, right? Activator modules uh, can do right-click functions, which are really neat, like, you know, right-clicking flint and steel to pop up uh, fire. Breaker modules destroy blocks in front of them, right? Um, you know, excluding bad things like bedrock. Um, you know, there's just, there's just all kinds of cool stuff. All kinds of cool stuff. Right? So we're going to be playing with the placer module. Tries to place an item from the router's buffer as a block adjacent to the router in the module's configured direction. If the item isn't a block or the destination block space is obstructed, nothing will be done. Normal Minecraft placement rules are followed. Example, sugar cane must be placed next to the water or sand on dirt. Yada, 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 yada. Um, so we're going to make a few of these and it's going to place things, right? So let's make our first one, demonstrate the basic mechanics of how it's going to work, and then go from there. Uh, so we're going to need dispensers, uh, which is going to need, we're going to need ultimately seven of these, right? So let's, let's just go ahead and get all seven. Uh, and then placer modules, uh, we're going to need the dispenser. We're going to need more string. I haven't really been running my mob farms. Um, and then, you know, when we need to, we will. So there's seven of those, and then we can make our placer module, and I should definitely sleep. Um, so I'm gonna want seven of those. And then it's nap time. All right, so I'm starting to play a little bit, and I've got a feel for how I wanna do this. Uh, I did a little bit of off-camera prep work, um, just, just to see, you know, what we think will be good. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we're gonna have a placer module who's configured. You can you can configure these modules by right clicking them, by the way. And I set them up to place in front, right? Um, and I'm not gonna filter what's allowed to be placed. I'm gonna handle that myself with probably laser IO. Uh, so in here we've got our, our placer module, and I manually put some soul sand in the buffer, and I did the same for this one, and that's all I've done. So let me talk to you guys about how this works. These modular routers will run once every 20 ticks or once a second by default. Now, normally by default, they're set to ignore redstone uh, mode, so they'll just always place. 
So if I have a placer module in here by itself, every second it's gonna place a dirt. Or more accurately, every 20 ticks the machine triggers, and then it'll place the dirt. So it might happen like as soon as I break the block, or it might happen a second. See, that was really quick. This one had a little bit more of a delay. So the standard is once a second, the machine triggers and it places the block, okay? Um, now, what I've done is turn on redstone mode. So this thing only works when it receives a redstone signal. And what you'll find is if I place a lever behind this guy and give him a redstone signal, within a second or so, he basically places the block. Now, sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's not. Um, so if you wanna speed that up and make sure that it's very quick, uh, what you can do is throw some speed upgrades in there. And what they'll do is they'll reduce the tick time, but I think it's two seconds each. So this will bring it down from 20 ticks to two ticks. So it'll happen basically almost instantly. So now when I give it its redstone signal, notice it instantly places, there's no delay. Perfect, perfect, that's what we want. Now to connect to multiples from one source, I've decided to go with redstone transmitters. I was considering XNet, I've decided against XNet. Uh, I was considering immersive engineering cables, I've decided against them. I kind of played around and said, you know what the easiest approach might be? Redstone receivers. Uh, so what I can do is place this here, and then if I click on the receiver with a stack of receivers in my hand, it makes sure that they're all set to the same channel, okay? So now I can shift click this and build it up, okay? And now I've got a transmitter that's also on channel two. So you notice these two are both on channel two and the transmitter's on channel two, okay? So check this out. If I'm, I'm gonna move it over here so it's more obvious that you guys who are watching can see what happens. But we put a redstone signal through the transmitter too. Both of them get their signal. How cool is that? Eh? Eh? Now I might wind up going with these three up top being a channel three because you wanna sort of stagger the placement of the soul sand and the wither skeleton skulls. Because if you place the wither skulls first and the soul sand second, oh, I need more cobalt, killing me smalls. Um, do I have more cobalt handy? If you do that in the wrong order, right? What happens is uh, the, the wither won't form. So that's something we're gonna wanna be prepared for. So I'll probably wind up doing another transmitter here. Uh, and that shouldn't be too bad. Also, I had to mine between segments because I ran out of redstone. <laughs> so just so you guys are aware, it's a thing that happened. Uh, so let's pick these guys up, right? I'm gonna remove all this stuff from these inventories and uh, everybody's gonna wanna have kind of the similar configuration, right? So you guys are gonna be these and this, that. And they won't stack if they have different configs and whatnot. So let's get over to here. And what I'm gonna have effectively, I'm gonna place this like right against the back wall and that should, no, we don't want it there. What I want it is here because what we're gonna have is the redstone pulses against the back wall. Okay. So you guys are gonna be configured and you're gonna have um, a placer module with speed upgrades and that's all you need, okay? Placer module with speed upgrades. Placer module with speed upgrades. Why am I hearing zombie noises? Placer module with speed upgrades. 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 Perfect. I'm just gonna place another mega torch over here because, boy, monsters. Uh, if I flew far enough away, they should all be spawn, right? Pretty sure that's how it works. Pretty sure that's how it works. I wanna to sleep to the night anyway. Okay, so with those all placed, now we wanna place our receivers. So I'm gonna want, um, let's do four of these will be channel two, right? The others will be channel three. How do I clear the channel on these? Channel set to four, I guess I'll take that. Yeah, that works, right? So this will be channel four. Uh, this will be channel two. This will be channel two. And these guys will be four. Okay, that works. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. So what we'll do is we'll kind of uh, build this up like so. 
okay? And we've got channel four goes up here. I may or may not be able to place this. Okay, so these guys are all channel four, okay? And you're also going to be on redstone high mode. Let's make sure that that is absolutely the case. Okay, that looks cool. And then, you guys all need to be redstone high mode. Oh, you have a pulse mode? I should be using pulse mode, I think. Why couldn't I find that before? I feel like last time, like, I was looking for that, and when I cycled through, I couldn't find a pulse mode. But now I'm seeing it, so that's nice. Maybe because I need the speed upgrades for pulse mode to exist? No. Meh. Whatever. But pulsed mode is probably where we want to go. It's funny, I was looking for that, and for some reason I couldn't find it before. It was, like, not, not there as an option. Either way, we're cool. All right. So now we want our receivers on four. Make sure that they're all correct. And then our final receiver on four. I think I can place that close. I can't imagine it's good if I pick that up with carry on. All right. I mean, that sounds cool, right? In theory. Now, uh, how am I going to get items into those guys? I think I can do it with modular routers. I'm going to have to use modular routers to get items into these modular routers because reasons. Um, specifically that I don't have access to the other sides of the blocks. Um, but for now, let's stage this with a little bit of... I'm going to put two... And in theory, if I put two Wither Skeleton Skulls in here, and two Soul Sand, we should be ready to test this. Alright, so here's what I'm thinking. To test this, this is channel 2, so in theory, pressing the left button will place the Soul Sand, pressing the right button will place the Wither Skeleton Skulls. You ready? Well, that worked pretty good. That worked really well. How good was that? Huh? That was awesome. All right, now I have to figure out how to auto kill this guy. I ain't quite gotten there yet. I mean, not for nothing, this is actually not too shabby. A little bit of, uh, it's pretty easy now that he's trapped. I can, I can wreck him. So I suspect if I'm not mistaken... So is anybody else noticing a pattern here? I noticed the... Let's back away, because he's doing the purple thingy. Ah, good. He wasn't able to destroy any blocks. Nice. Um, I noticed last time... I, I summoned him. He, uh... He definitely had, like, one of the weather minion dudes. You know what I could do? This is what I'm thinking at least. Uh, we could throw... We could throw... Some witherproof glass right here. And then the minions shouldn't be allowed to get out. And in theory, maybe I could still, you know... If I did this, that should be pretty safe, right? And I have a way to, you know, whatever it. And if I need to get in there, I can still boop. But I don't think I'll need to get in there, right? At some point, I need to figure out auto-harming the wither. Uh, which would be cool to do. Um, yeah, I think this looks good, right? What do you guys think? Alright, not bad. Not bad. Should we do some circuit, super circuit maker stuff to make it even cooler? Like, I'm gonna say yes. So let's do this. Um... So I'm going to want a super circuit maker set up. Uh, let's put away you and you. 
and you. Uh, quartz resonator, I'm pretty sure is like a delayer. We're gonna want some redstone dust. Ender pulsar, yeah, let's do that. Uh, and then that should be cool. Yeah, I'm down with that plan. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. I would like to have a lever that I can switch and it will spawn withers repeatedly until I turn it off. That's effectively what I want. So let's get our screwdriver here. And uh, somebody did have a really nice idea that if you shrink down, it's a little bit easier to see what you're doing. <laughs> That's cool. That we may not necessarily need to. Uh, so anyway, let's have the lever come here. Okay. And ultimately, we're going to want two outputs, right? One for channel two. And the other for channel three. And I'm just going to, for now, make this. Let's use regular vanilla redstone for this bit. For, the, for, for me showing you how this is going to work, is going to be vanilla redstone. And let me put away you two. And I don't need this at the moment. Anything else I don't need? Probably my bow and arrow. You I'm done with. Just organizing inventory. Uh, so let me snag a little bit of redstone. Okay. And then eventually we'll replace the redstone with the transmitters. Okay. So you're going to be connected, you're going to be connected, and then you're going to be an input. And then in the middle here, uh, I'll probably have, well, in the middle here, I want to have this still. But I want my ender pulsar here with this as an output. Okay, so that when he has a redstone signal, he's not pulsing, right? And I think my pulse timer should be like, Eight seconds? How's that sound? So it spawns wither like this. Every four seconds? Does that sound cool? Yeah. As long as we get them in there pretty good, I think we should be cool. Uh, now, alternatively, what we could have is just a button push for this. Uh, and I might start with the button push until I automate the killing. Okay. Now we want to have a delay here. So let's use our quartz resonator. To make that happen. And you're going to have a one second delay. So watch this. How cool is that? That's pretty cool, right? And we can make that delay as long as we want. Like if we want it to be... I think if you hold shift, you can modify it the tick level. So if I wanted it half a second delay, is that cool? I like that. All right, so then channel four goes here. And channel two goes there. And now in theory, press button spawn wither. You ready? Here goes nothing. Boom. How cool was that? I love everything about it. Let's back away. He's going to blow me up. I know it. I love it. Oh, yeah. And now his little skeletons are trapped in there, too, because they're small, but they're not one block size small. out here you guys are cheaters holy cow did you see that cheat what is this nonsense what is this nonsense the cheating the cheating on display here the cheating on display oh my goodness
He's purple again. I almost didn't notice. In fairness, I'm also cheating. Let's be honest. Nice. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. All right, so press button spawn wither is working. Auto kill and vacuum up wither drops is next. And when I say next, well, after looking at how long this episode is, I've decided that means next episode. So for now, Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and look into automatically killing the wither. How am I going to do that? I have no idea. I really don't. Um, we'll figure it out. Uh... I just, I just have no clue. I just really don't know what I'm going to do. Um, there's, there's Batania, I think, can do it. Uh, RF Tools, if I used the Force Field, could have done it. But I usually, I've done that plenty of times before. So I'm like a little meh on doing that again. Um, you know, there's things, there's a lot, there's, there's a way. We'll figure something out. That's, that's what I'll tell you. One way or another, we'll figure something out. But for now, we got to wrap up. So Double 20 sign off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.